Before I get into today's video, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and if we can get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we will be giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Freaking Kingdom. That's right, those that steel book, right? You get that cool steel book, the pin set, the poster, the art book. I eh, know it leaked. Whatever, you can have it firsthand. All you got to do is subscribe to the channel for a chance, and let's make magic happen. All right, so we got a couple of things I want to get into today. First one, we'll deal with something that's a brand new news story, Metroid Prime Remaster doing the seemingly impossible. Of course, maybe you might not think it's as impossible as you think, but it has been firing out the gates, topping sales charts everywhere that it's available. Heck, in the UK, it debuted at number two, having the fourth largest physical release of all time. Of course, it also sold out physically in the UK, so it's not even counting digital sales. But our good friend of the channel, the man, the myth, the legend, Paul Gale Network, who is heavily connected in this industry, was at the Super Nintendo World launch around Chris Pratt and Doug Bowser and everyone else from Nintendo. Here's the thing. He put out there yesterday that Metroid Prime Remaster has crossed 1 million in sales. Now, he noted less than half of these sales are physical and with the limitations on the physical release and all the scalping, not really a surprise that less than half are physical. Also, it launched a full week early digitally, but it has already crossed 1 million in sales, hitting its first major milestone. Obviously, next is 2 million, and who knows from there. So I do think Metro Prime Remaster will probably cross 2 million copies eventually. I'm not sure on what the legs for this game is going to be. Typically, Metroid games aren't evergreen, so they don't tend to sell a lot over time. So really, I, I don't know that we're even going to get that much more than a million. I know some people predicted that it would outsell Metroid Dread. It's a 3D Metroid game. It's only 40 bucks, but also Nintendo didn't put a ton of marketing behind Metroid Dread. So yeah, I, I kind of think it might hit 2 million at the top end, but still, these are absolutely incredible sales uh, for a game just randomly dropped out of the sky uh, with no warning. So, hey, it's crossed a million. It's a massive milestone. I'm really happy to see Metro Games consistently doing well. And you know what? We just need... 2 and 3, and eventually Metro Prime 4 unveiled, right? I think Metro Prime 4 at this point might be a cross-generation title or something, but that's neither here nor there. We got to get 2 and 3, right? Like, hey, there's rumors about those games also coming at some point. I Hopefully we get them before the end of the year. That would be really, really cool. The last thing I want to talk to you and what we're going to spend a majority of this video on is the precarious situation Nintendo finds them in. They are in uncharted territory because Nintendo has traditionally fumbled the ball when they've been in this situation, right? They were at the top of the world back in the original Game Boy and Nintendo Entertainment System days, and they basically fumbled the ball, especially on the home console side. While the Super Nintendo was a successful system, there were other competitors coming up like the Sega Genesis, and Nintendo didn't really capture the same success they did with the Nintendo Entertainment System. And then the next time they had a massively successful home console, and heck, even handheld was the Wii and DS days, right? That's really when things blew up again. By the way, not knocking Game Boy Advance. It did incredible as well. But we had the Wii and DS days and Nintendo kind of fumbled the ball. The next generation of devices for Nintendo became the combined worst selling generation in Nintendo's history. While the 3DS did cross 75 million in sales, it actually was Nintendo's worst selling handheld system. That just goes to show how amazingly well their handhelds have sold. And then home console-wise, Wii U was far and away their worst selling. Uh, I know some people might bring up Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy wasn't a home console. It was a tabletop 3D console. It, it, was, it was kind of its own category, as it were. So it, it's very interesting uh, looking at this Nintendo Switch situation. Look, I'm not saying they need to release a new platform this year. We all know about all those reports and rumors and stuff that we've already talked about all last week. But what I'm really curious about is how Nintendo is going to handle this transition. Because again, in Nintendo's history, they fumble the transition. Uh, they, they mess it up. They don't get it right. And 
I, I do wonder what Shintaro Furukawa is going to do because he's more of a numbers person, right? He has never actually handled a system launch. People might forget Shintaro Furukawa didn't launch the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Nintendo Switch was Iwata's uh, final idea for a system and was heavily in production uh, right up until the moment that he died. He was still heavily involved in phone calls. May he rest in peace. What a workaholic Iwata was in his dying days, still putting in that work to make Switch happen. But really, we had a transitionary uh, president at Nintendo who uh, was, was pretty old, but, you know, obviously... They needed to put someone at the helm, and he handled the launch of, you know, the, the Nintendo Switch. Him probably combined with Reggie fils -Aimé. Reggie fils -Aimé was on the board at that time and a major player, and obviously as one of the leftovers of the Iwata era, probably was really influential in launching Switch and making sure it got off the ground just right. But here's the thing. That was obviously back then, and here we are today. We have a new president, both at Nintendo of America and Doug Bowser, who is not on the board in Japan, and we have obviously a new president of the whole of Nintendo in Shintaro Furukawa, who came from the accounting side of Nintendo, right? He's been at some other companies, but he's been at Nintendo a long time handling accounting and various other uh, business-related jobs like that. So he's at the helm, and while Miyamoto's obviously still there, as are some of the old guard able to influence things a little bit, Ultimately, it's up to Furukawa and, you know, Doug Bowser in a lesser degree because Doug Bowser is the president of Nintendo's largest sales region uh, to come up with a way to transition successfully to the next platform. And whether that's this year, next year, the year after, whenever it happens, Nintendo is in a precarious situation because they've never really quite gotten the transition from a successful platform right. They've always dropped the ball in one way or another and I wonder what Nintendo is going to do this time. Now, if you look at the competition, which I, I think Shintaro Furukawa might be more aware of than past presidents, I don't know. But obviously, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, phones, etc. have handled transitions into new devices quite seamlessly. And the biggest thing they've done, especially when you look at the PlayStation 5, Xbox series, and say even phone devices today, is that those devices don't abandon the old audience. The old audience... Their devices are still, uh, you know, the ones they own now are still relevant. They still get new software. They still get updates. And they're not really left behind. They're given the time to transition at their own pace. And this has led, obviously, to consistent sales for PlayStation, where the one, two, three, you know, four and five are all doing really, really well. Even PlayStation 3, their worst selling system was at 80 million units, which would have been, you know, right at the top of Nintendo's sales chart until we landed. So, Obviously, even PlayStation's worst home console would have been a success for Nintendo. So I, I hope that they learn from the way these companies have handled transitions over the years. And Nintendo realizes a couple of things. One, you can't just abandon the Switch platform. I think that is what had a lot of people scared every time we bring up this topic of a new system. I just got a Switch OLED, or I might buy the Zelda OLED, and that's my first Switch to play Tears of the Kingdom. You know, I, I they don't want the transition. They're going to leave me behind. And you know what? Your fear is relevant because Nintendo has traditionally left people behind at the end of a generation. But hopefully Nintendo's learned that that's not the way to do it. You don't alienate the current audience when you're launching a new device. You keep that current audience up to date. You give them games. You do cross-platform games. I understand Nintendo's tradition is, hey, we might have some backwards compatibility, but any new games coming on the next platform are going to be exclusive to that platform. You must buy that platform. We are completely abandoning our old audience. And I, I hope that Nintendo gives a transition period or at least a year. You know, if the system launches this year, okay. Then the entirety of 2024, that all their major games that year end up being cross-platform. That's the way to treat your audience right. I know some people get frustrated by that. They want games to be exclusive to the next platform so they get the you know, best of the best possible, but also Nintendo needs to worry about that transition. Like PlayStation 5 doesn't have a ton of games exclusively on it that didn't also release on PlayStation 4, but now that we're entering year three, we're, you know, we're, we're in year three actually, uh, and, and thinking about year four next year for PlayStation, we're going to start seeing more and more games that aren't on PS4, but are exclusively on PlayStation 5. And that's how Sony handles their transition. By year three, you start to get a lot of the big exclusives. Before that, you still get big games with the cross platform so they don't abandon that old audience. And I think if Nintendo could do that for even a year, if they don't go as long as Sony, just one year of that cross platform support, 
I think would do wonders. So if Nintendo announces a new platform, drops it this holiday, I think people will be less inclined to be upset because Nintendo could promise a full year of support, which would be absolutely wonderful. That would mean, hey, if Metro Prime 4 comes out next year, it'll be on both platforms, right? The new Mario game could be on both platforms. Uh, so I, I, I do think that that is something to consider. I do think if they launch like a new Mario Kart, that might stay exclusive just because we already have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch. You know, stuff like that that comes once a generation. But anyways, I don't know. I, th these are just my thoughts. I hope that Nintendo learns. I know they're in a precarious situation. They're in uncharted territory with how successful and the fervor of sales they're still getting as we just proved with Metro Prime Remaster, as we saw with Pokemon Scarlet Violet last holiday, as we're going to see with Tears of the Kingdom. Clearly, the audience still wants software. So I hope Nintendo goes, look, we might need to launch the next thing. It's going to be in the same family. We're going to do cross-gen for a while. And we're just going to... Take advantage of every market, the market that wants something new, the market that wants things to stay the same, and we can end up hitting this perfect sales equilibrium in the way that Sony does, in the way that phone devices do, and Xbox has done this generation. So here's hoping that uh, Nintendo learns and they take advantage of what they've seen. And honestly, if a device comes this year, I already think that means Nintendo has learned. Since they are releasing Tears of the Kingdom this May, Pikmin 4 this July, typically Nintendo would release nothing major leading up to a device launch so they can have all those exclusives but uh if they do launch it this holiday that does feel like nintendo's already learned because we're still getting major games on switch really you know in throughout this year so i mean we don't know what's happening after july but you know what i mean like when new systems launch in a few months after that kind of makes sense if there's a small gap but if that gap isn't a whole year in just a few months that makes a lot of sense and if the next major game that's launching with it also was on Switch, you're going to reinvigorate some Switch sales anyways. You presume a price cut for the holidays, new system comes out, people buy the expensive one, people that want to get that new game on the cheap buy the cheaper Switches. Honestly, it's a perfect equilibrium, and I hope that Nintendo does that. For now, we don't know what Nintendo's going to do. You let me know how you would handle the transition down below from a business perspective. I know there's that personal perspective, what we want, what we want them to do, what sort of device we want. But if you're Nintendo and you're all about making that money and keeping that audience, what would you do to transition? Would it involve this year? Would it involve many years from now. Let me know down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance. I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, I have a smidge of an update on the, on my uh, office situation. I actually had a different video today, but my laptop crashed and all the files got corrupted and it's a pain in the butt. Uh, our Mac Studio that we ordered a few weeks ago back on February 22nd, uh, looks like it might be shipping this week. It's moved into preparing to ship, uh, and that's going to make a world of difference for the content. I'll be back on camera, uh, and you know what? We're just going to be flying through content, multiple videos a day, way better editing. I, dude, I, I, just, I just can't wait, guys. Um, I, I love making content for you guys. Anything that makes that easier takes us to the next level, enables us to do more is something I'm always excited about. So I hope you're excited for that content as well. As we continue to build this channel, and, uh, you know, hopefully by the end of this year, you're seeing, you know, videos that no matter what it's about, you're just happy to watch. I'll catch you guys in that next video.